Hey, Tyler with Lowbrow Customs here. Today we're going to show you how easy it is to install a set of Lowbrow Customs T-Bar handlebars on this stock 1994 Harley-Davidson 1200cc Sportster. The bars we're using for today's install are Lowbrow Customs T-Bar handlebars. This particular set's a 10-inch rise. We also have them available in an eight inch rise. These are dimpled here for use with the stock Harley Davidson hand controls and uh, available in chrome or black. And we also have a eight inch rise stainless steel all TIG welded version available. The install is gonna be exactly the same for any of those varieties. Let's do it. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is remove the stock gauge cluster. Now on this model, the speedometer and tachometer are mounted to the top riser clamp uh, with this bracket. Because we're going to be installing some riserless handlebars, uh, we won't be able to mount that in the same place anymore. So you either need to eliminate your gauges or relocate them. Uh, one option is a speedometer gauge mount by Lowbrow Customs. We have it in polished and black for one inch and one and a quarter inch diameter bars. And that actually mounts to the, the vertical uprights of your handlebar and allows you to mount your gauge at whatever height you want. So it's a really uh, simple and effective way to keep your speedometer Removing the gauge cluster is very easy. We're simply going to remove the two socket head allens that are also part of your top clamp riser assembly. And for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and drop these down out of the way and leave them with the cables attached. Got a little spacer in there. After loosening this gauge cluster, uh, I took a look and decided I'm gonna quickly remove the eyebrow. That'll drop the headlight down and allow me to get the gauge cluster further out of the way. And then also, you may, sometimes uh, you might need to loosen the eyebrow or the headlight itself just to give a, enough clearance to get uh, a wrench or socket onto the riser nuts on the riser bolts. And I often find in mechanical endeavors that uh, instead of trying to work around things, it's often <laughs> less frustrating and faster to spend the small amount of extra time to remove components just to make your life a little easier. Okay. All right, so the gauges are loose. And what I'm gonna do is actually just carefully, there we go, undo the stock connector. Now I can just go ahead and put these down low. I'm just gonna let them hang. And that allows me much more working room here around the handlebars. All right, I'm gonna remove the hand controls and I'm going to also remove the, uh, the turn signals for now in the mirrors, just to drop them down out of the way. <clears throat> Going to custom handlebars, uh, I would absolutely end up personally swapping out to smaller turn signals or deleting them, but uh, swapping them out, you can go to a fork tube mounted uh, clamp with smaller turn signals, and it really just cleans up the look of your bars instead of all this stuff. And in regards to mirrors, Lowbrow Customs has a wide array, round, square, heart-shaped, black, chrome, all sorts of different style mirrors that are much more low profile and look great on your bike. So be sure to check those out. Use a 5 8 inch wrench here and on this side, the mirror actually stem threads into the turn signal. So they come off at the same time. And the stock wiring is held in place with some little clips that simply pull out of holes in the, uh, that are drilled in the stock handlebars. Just let that guy hang for now. Okay, now let's turn signals out of the way. We're gonna go ahead and move, get rid of the, uh, the right hand control cluster, throttle and switches. This is an eighth inch Allen key. I can go ahead and uh, loosen these up. Put 
And then this one is a 532nd Allen for the brake lever. There's that clamp. And that frees that up. We've got a hard line on here, so I want to be a little careful with where we put that. We can slide the throttle. Just free the end of the bars. That cleans up that side. And now onto the clutch side. All right, back to our 532nd Allen. Use an Allen key. Pour one on a ratchet. Loosen these up. Our clutch lever clamp. And then there is a, there's actually two eighth inch little Allen bolts, except on this motorcycle, one of them is missing on this side. So there's just one. One to remove in this case. Finish removing this hardware. Oops. Carefully let the lever go to the ground. And the other side of the switch housing and the stock grip is still glued in place. You can, if you're not using the stock grips, you can actually slice through with carefully with a razor blade and simply peel it off. Or uh, sometimes, now these are glued on pretty good, that's, that's what I would do is slice them with a razor blade. But uh, if they're softer rubber grips, you can take the, air, the blow off tool, air nozzle from your air compressor, stick it in there and give it full air while you slide it off and it typically pops right off. Before we remove the top clamp and get the bars out of the way, uh, I'm going to go ahead and loosen the, the nuts here that are on the end of the riser bolts. They're three quarter inch. And we actually already pre-loosened these. Can be a little bit of a knuckle buster if they haven't been loosened in a long time and they break free. But if you remove your bars and risers and then go to, or, or try to loosen those before your bars are in, it can be a little tougher. So now that I know these are relatively loose. We'll go ahead and undo the top clamp, which is held on in this case by two bolts. Be careful because uh, your bars will flop down at this point. It's actually really good practice. I know it's what Todd would do if he were here right now is put a rag over the gas tank, but I'm being lazy about it. There we go. Top clamp. Hardware, old bars. Got a three quarter inch socket on my ratchet, which I can fit in here now that I remove the headlight and eyebrow out of the way. So I'll just hold the, the riser base until it gets loose enough that I can unthread it. This On this model, this riser base has a stud that's threaded into the lower riser. So that whole unit pulls out. There's a little cup that goes over the rubber on the bottom and the nut. And this side, I'm gonna actually sneak a three quarter inch box end wrench in and just use my hand, make it a little faster to unthread the nut because the, uh, the hard line on that side's in the way to get the ratchet in there. One thing I wanted to mention on this 1994 1200 Sportster, it has this style mounting stud where it's basically a double headed stud and the, what I would call the spacer is integrated. This is one piece of hardware. On most bikes, you'll find this style. Uh, the, the rubber top hats are the same for both styles, but as you can see, this has a, just a regular old bolt in there and a sleeve and since I have this stuff lying around, what I'm gonna do for ease is I'm gonna actually use 
this bolt, these caps, and that sleeve on this install. Uh, if you have this style, you can see these flats milled here, you could carefully, say, clamp that riser in a vise with soft jaws, put a wrench on here, unthread the stud, thread that stud into your bars, and use this stock style setup. Um, another option is these are Lowbrow Customs solid riser bushings. These are machine solid aluminum, black anodized. These accept a socket, a cap head, uh, socket head Allen bolt, um, which recesses in there for a clean look. One thing you always wanna make sure is any riser bolts or hardware you use, you really wanna use grade eight uh, just to be safe because they're holding your handlebars to your bike and you do not want them to shear. All right, now we are ready to get our T-bars in place. Don't forget to replace the, uh, to put your top cups back in place on top of the rubbers. Now, one thing that you can hold these in place and just kind of see where your controls are gonna end up. Eh, I could probably stretch that over there with these both in place. But in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and slide it over the bar before I bolt the bars in place just for ease. If you needed a little extra room from your cables, these are run through the inside of the fork tube. You could always uh, un unhook your throttle and idle cable and run them to the outside of the tube. It'll give you probably another inch or two of, of slack. But in this case, this will work fine. So I slide that over. I'm gonna grab my riser bolts, uh, grade eight riser bolts with the other cup for the bottom rubber and get these threaded in place and tightened up. There we go, our T-bars are now in place. The 10 inch rise T-bars on the rubber mounting, you still have a little vibration dampening there. And we'll work on getting our controls all buttoned back up. One thing I noticed immediately is the hard line here from this master cylinder, uh, it is actually a little too long. What I'm gonna do for right now is use this nut driver and remove the clamp that holds this junction to the soft line to the top triple tree. To allow us to finish this install. Now, because of the hard line on this bike and the fact that it's too long, once I have these levers installed, uh, what I personally would do is measure, and a good way to do it is using a piece of wire or something, running it down to uh, the other end and, and then measuring that piece of wire to get the length brake line you need. And then you can simply order up a ready-made uh, brake line to the proper length, swap it out, breed your front brake, and you're gonna have a really nice clean setup. You might be able to rework this, uh, this one, or shorten the hard line as well. Uh, just something you might have to deal with when you're changing from one cell of bar to another and if it's a, if it's a drastic change. But now that I loosen that up, we'll go ahead and get this control pod back in place. So this throttle assembly is still loose. You can see this button right here that I'm depressing with my thumb. That's actually your brake light switch. And here on the front brake lever, when you pull in the front brake and that little paddle moves out of the way, it allows that switch to come out and that engages or turns on your brake light. So it's important you have this lined up properly. The other thing that's a nice, easy way to illustrate here is I can point out the dimple in the handlebar. This is what allows dimple bars to work with stock hand controls, is that wire from the switch housing nestles directly into that, that dimple. And if you're not using stock hand controls and switch clusters, you can use smooth handlebars. You won't need that dimple. So I'm gonna go ahead and fight this a little because of this hard line, but I'm gonna go ahead and position the Brake master cylinder so it engages properly with the switch housing. Let's see if I can get this all started without dropping everything. Okay. That is the right controls all back in place. Okay, we're ready to put the 
clutch lever and switch assembly back on. Pretty straightforward. We're going to go ahead and slide this switch assembly in place. And again, the, uh, the wire engages the dimple on the bar there. So make sure that that's in place. In this case, too, we have excess wire, which can be cleaned up later, tucked away and zip tied up the bar. Get the clutch lever in place and it engages right into the switch housing, kind of nestles right in there. And I will go ahead and get the clamp in place. And before I snug anything up, I want to make sure that the wire is engaged in the dimple, that the angle of the lever rotation on the bar is correct. So I'll go ahead and snug up the switch pod. Again, there's normally two bolts. This one happens to be missing one at this time. Go ahead and snug the clutch lever up. All right, now that our controls are all back in place, uh, this finishes the general install of these Lowbrow Customs 10 inch rise T-bar handlebars. Uh, some things, um, you know, we wouldn't run the bike like this, some things that uh, need to be done to finish this up. Um, you'd always look at cable routing. For instance, this clutch cable is actually a little long. I will probably pull the control off and loop the cable around the frame this way and perhaps in front of the bars. That'll take up some of the slack, it'll look nice, keep it tidy. You know, uh, you know, maybe throw a zip tie or stainless zip tie on any of your wiring there. And on this particular model, the brake line, the hard line's too long, so that needs to be modified. And some other fun and easy things you can do uh, are changing out grips. Lowbrow Customs has a wide variety, styles and colors of all different hand grips. A another thing that's uh, popular and, and, and fun and changes the look of your bike are your levers, your brake and clutch lever. Inexpensive, quick to change, looks great and uh, mirrors. We've got a wide variety of mirrors if you want to run mirrors. And the main thing here would be relocating the turn signals and the gauges. Turn signals, you can use a fork tube clamp that comes off and smaller turn signals to, to get rid of these, these giant bulbous ones. And then uh, your speedometer, you could use a speedo gauge bracket that mounts to the uprights on these bars. You could relocate it in a variety of different places or eliminate it, uh, that is all up to you. So anything you need, parts you need for your Sportster or other bikes, uh, custom bikes and stock, all sorts, check out lowbrowcustoms.com. Be sure to subscribe to our channel, get the latest videos, uh, like this video if you did like it. If you've got any questions, comments, anything, leave them below and you'll get a response from us. And feel free to reach out to us anytime. We offer free motorcycle technical support. Thank you very much for watching and see you out there.